In this movie, I'll show you the new selection options in Alias 2011. On the Preferences menu, there's a new Selection Options window, and this has two parts. At the top, there's Face Selection, which is used when picking surfaces, and now allows selection on the interior of a surface, as well as on the edges and isopalms. The second part of the option window sets the selection behaviour when picking with the mouse. And this allows us to customise the way in which the left, the middle and the right mouse buttons behave. I'll start by looking at face selection on this shower gel pack. Previous versions of Alias have used edge selection, which means that I've always needed to click on the wireframe to select a surface, either on an edge or on an isopalm. If I try to choose the middle of a surface by clicking here, it doesn't select. To change this behaviour I can now open the new Selection Options window and choose Face Selection. There's two modes, Closest and Select Through, and I'll start with the Closest setting. Now clicking in the middle of the surface will select it. What I like about this is that it makes me less dependent on viewing isopalms and patch precision lines, so I can work with a less cluttered view. So now I can click anywhere in the middle of this face to select the surface really quickly. So how does it work when I've got more surfaces visible? Well I'll start in wireframe, and when I pick on this face, I only select that front label surface, and that's how the closest option works. I think of a hidden line view, so I'm only wanting to pick the surfaces closest to the camera, and if I want to pick a surface at the rear, I'll tumble the model around. If I go back to wireframe, that's how I think of the select through mode. Because now, when I pick on this face, I can choose between the front label or the back label, so the selection treats the model as see-through. The new face selection and the old edge selection techniques coexist and are controlled by where I click. So if I put my cursor here on an edge, it switches to edge selection and gives me the pick chooser, ignoring any face that may be in front of or behind the edges. And if I'm clicking here, I'm clearly intending to pick a face, so I get face selection. And back over here, I'm now clearly intending to choose one of these edges, and it's smart enough to know the difference, so I get edge selection. If I now want to use the face selection in shaded mode, it works in exactly the same way. And with the select through option, I even get a good preview of the hidden surfaces. The only tricky interaction comes when I accidentally click where an edge is hidden behind the face, and I might be surprised by the pick chooser popping up. So I've found that using the X-ray settings to have a faint view of the model behind the shading works really well, as I'm better able to predict what I'm going to be selecting. Edges here, or faces here. But one of the best things about using face selection with a shaded view is that it now also affects the point of interest setting. Even if I toggle the wireframe off, I can now snap the point of interest onto any face that I can see, so I can control the presentation of my designs without having to see the wireframe lines. And this works particularly well on larger models like this. Being able to control the tumbling without showing the wireframe makes it much easier to focus on the design during a presentation or a review, without being distracted by the patch layout. And if I now have a look at just the bodywork on this model, it's also a good example of when I can use face selection successfully in shaded mode to make picking much quicker. And it works well here because I have a single skin without too many overlapping surfaces, and without too many edges. In contrast, this snowmobile is a much more complex model, with lots of overlapping edges. 
If I try to select the glass canopy on this pod, it switches immediately to edge selection. If I work without the shading, it's better, but there's still not many faces that I can pick easily. So what I've found really useful is to put the selection option settings onto a marking menu or a shelf, once for each setting, so that I can quickly change to, say, edge selection, depending on the type of model that I'm working on. Or here I've put the three settings onto a marking menu. Now I'll have a look at just one of these pods and show you how the new selection options work with the transform tools. I'm used to using edge selection in previous versions and when I pick an object and move it I can then simply click onto the edge of another object and move that instead. But if I already have the object selected then I need to click and drag in an empty part of the screen like here or over here. And that's because if I accidentally click and drag on another edge it assumes that I want to move that surface instead. So how is this workflow affected if I switch to face selection? With face selection this area is no longer free space. I can select the surface by clicking in it. But if I now go back and move this bottle you'll see that I can still use this as blank space without it being accidentally selected for the transform. And this is because face selection is disabled when I'm using the transform tools. So if I wanted to quickly move this glass now instead of the bottle, then face selection won't pick it. So I have two choices. I can simply choose the edge and it moves as normal. Or if I use the shift key, then face selection is temporarily enabled again and I can select it using the face. So there's a slightly different use of the shift key in edge and face selection modes when using the transform tools. So I've got three choices of workflow. I can keep the default settings and use edge selection, or I can use the new face selection to click on the surfaces closest to the camera, or I can select all the way through a model. And with the two face selection options, I can use the shift key to control the selection during a transform operation. Now I want to look at how we can customise the mouse buttons using the second part of the Selection Options window. Under Selection Behaviour, for each of the three mouse buttons I can now choose the behaviour I want when I'm picking objects. I've got the original settings of Toggle, Pick and Unpick, and a new setting called Add. I'll start with the old settings that you'll know from previous versions, and just clarify how these settings relate to the mouse behaviour that you're used to. I'll use this speaker model as an example and work on the layout for the holes around the edge. Because you can't see my mouse clicks, I'll keep this mouse model on the screen to highlight which button I'm clicking each time. And I'll start with the left one, which behaves as a toggle. I can pick a group of objects and then pick again to add to that selection. When I choose both picked and unpicked objects, they toggle. The selected ones are deselected and the unselected ones are selected. It means I have to be quite precise with my selection, which can slow me down. Some people use the left mouse button only, and it can be used to do everything you need, but the other functions can speed up your workflow considerably. The middle mouse button was set to pick, or pick only. When I choose objects, all the previous selections are forgotten, and only the ones I've picked are selected. It eliminates the need to use a pick nothing command between selections. The right mouse button only unpicks objects. So here it will only deselect and won't select any new objects. The new option, Add, works similarly, but it adds only. I'll put it onto the middle mouse button, and this is now set as the default. To start with, it selects in the same way as the toggle. But then, when I pick across a mix of objects, it only adds to the selection. It won't toggle objects off. 
so I don't have to be so precise with my mouse movements. This is particularly useful when I'm working with CVs. This model of a hand is a good example as it has lots of CVs in quite a complex layout. I'll start with toggle and try to pick the CVs on the index finger. At the beginning it's easy to pick them, but the toggle function means that every time I try to add CVs to the selection I lose some, and I have to get more and more precise, eventually selecting them one by one. If I now switch to the add function it's much easier, as I can just keep adding to my selection without toggling any CVs off so I can quickly drag extra boxes to catch the remaining CVs, without worrying about unselecting any. So it makes it much easier to pick all the CVs for this index finger. This final example is a quick concept model of a handheld device. It could be a phone or a media player. To model the soft shape at the back, I'll typically sculpt a simple plane surface and just move the edge CVs upwards and then trim it to the shape that I want. This would be the kind of surface I would start with, and I'll use the normal toggle setting with the pick hull tool. But look what happens when I use toggle to select the perimeter CVs on this surface. The CVs on the corners get deselected. If I now switch to using the new add function, I can use pick hull much more efficiently, as it no longer toggles off the corner CVs. So it's easier to move those edges upwards, and then trim them off to create the sculpted shape. So picking and selecting is something we use with almost every tool, and we'll use hundreds of times each day. So even a small change in picking can mean a significant improvement to our overall efficiency. When you first open Alias 2011, the mouse keys will be set up with the new Add function. But I would encourage you to experiment with all the new selection options, and to use the shelves or marking menus to be able to switch quickly between them, until you find the best combination for your workflow.